Back at it today with another video as in today's video we're going to be taking a look at every MLB team's best player under age 25. Real quick before we get into the video I want to let you guys know that we're only going to be looking at players today who are currently on major league rosters so we're not going to be looking at any prospects who have yet to make their debut. But anyways, with that in mind, let's get right into the video. First up is the Diamondbacks, where I'm going with Corbin Carroll. Carroll is not only the best young player on the Diamondbacks, he's one of, if not the best young player in baseball today. On the air, he's hitting 267 with 21 home runs, 37 stolen bases, an 847 OPS, and a 4.0 war. So this guy is clearly one of the best players in baseball already, and he's going to continue to get better and better, which is a pretty scary thought. Getting on to the Braves, I have Spencer Strider. Strider is an elite young pitcher as on the air in 146 innings he's posted a 3.57 ERA and 227 strikeouts. He's the reigning National League Rookie of the Year for a reason. He has filthy stuff and he's most likely going to crack the 300 strikeout threshold this year. Getting on to the Orioles, I have Gunnar Henderson. Henderson got off to a pretty slow start but has picked things up as of late as in 111 games he's hitting 242 with 20 home runs, a 789 OPS, and he's also a very good defender as he has 8 defensive runs saved on the year. The Orioles are full of young talented players but I think Henderson stands out among the rest. He is a future star and he's going to be a very good player for a very long time. Moving on to the Red Sox, I have Tristan Cassis. The Red Sox don't have a ton of young, talented players on their Major League roster, but Cassis has been pretty good as in 109 games, he's hitting 253 with 20 home runs and an 836 OPS. Similar to Gunnar Henderson, Cassis got off to a very slow start, but he's been one of the hottest players in baseball over the past month or so, and he's going to be a really good power source in this Red Sox lineup going forward. Getting on to the White Sox, I have Gregory Santos. Santos is probably a name you haven't heard of too much, but he's been good out of the bullpen as in 57 innings he's posted a 3 ERA while striking out 57 batters and locking down 4 saves. He's the current closer on an awful White Sox team so yeah he's not going to get a ton of recognition but he has been pretty good for the White Sox this year. Getting the Cubs, I have Christopher Morell. Morell has only played in 78 games but has left a big impact as he's hitting 256 with 19 home runs, 60 runs driven in, and an 834 OPS. Morell is a pretty exciting player to watch. He's clutch and he's provided the Cubs with a big spark in the middle of their lineup. Getting on to the Reds, I have Ellie De La Cruz. De La Cruz may very well be the most exciting young player in the game today as in 61 games he's hitting 257 with 10 home runs, 19 stolen bases, and a 761 OPS. I was really Really close to putting Matt McLean for the Reds, but De La Cruz I think slightly out edges him. Moving on to the Guardians, I have Tanner Bibby. Bibby has been a really good pitcher for the Guardians as in 109 innings he's posted a 2.9 ERA with 106 strikeouts. He is a very good pitcher who one day looks like he's going to have the makings of an all-star caliber pitcher. Getting on to the Rockies, I have Ezekiel Tovar. Tovar in 115 games is hitting 264 with 14 home runs, 7 stolen bases, and he's also really good defensively as he has 9 defensive run saved. Tovar is quietly putting together one of the best rookie seasons of anyone in baseball this year, and it's unfortunate he plays for a franchise like the Rockies. Moving on to the Tigers, I have Spencer Torkelson. In 120 games, Torkelson's only hitting 229, but he does have 21 home runs and 66 runs driven in. He got off to a slow start this year, but over the past month plus, he's been one of the hottest hitters in baseball. He seems to hit a home run almost every game. Next up is the Houston Astros, where I have Hunter Brown. Brown has been pretty good for the Astros, as in 125 innings, he's posted a 4.16 ERA and 138 strikeouts. At this point, the Astros don't necessarily have the most young talent in the world, but Brown is still a very good pitcher who has a very bright future. Moving on to the Royals, I have Bobby Witt Jr. This choice was a no-brainer as in 121 games, Witt is hitting 278 with 24 home runs, 34 stolen bases, an 819 OPS, and a 4.0 war. He's one of the best young players in the game today. I cannot wait to watch him going forward as he's one of my favorite players to watch. Getting on to the Angels, I have Zach Neto. Prior to getting injured, Neto was putting together a very good rookie year as in 67 games he was hitting 241 with 8 home runs, 5 stolen bases, and a 725 OPS. He may not be a future superstar, but he was clearly making a big impact on the Angels when he was on the field and healthy. For the Dodgers, I have Bobby Miller. In 75 innings, Miller has posted a 3.7 ERA with 70 strikeouts. I was really close to putting James Outman on the list, but Miller has been really good since getting called up a few months back, and I think he's the best young player on the Dodgers. Moving on to the Marlins, I have Yuri Perez. Perez is the youngest player on today's list at only 20 years old, and he's made a big impact this year. In 62 innings, he's posted a 3.19 ERA with 70 three strikeouts so this guy clearly has a very bright future and he is going to be a very good pitcher for a very long time. Getting on to the Brewers, I have Sal Freelich. 
Freelich hasn't necessarily been up for too long, but in his 25 games, he is hitting 233 with 3 home runs, 5 stolen bases, and a 790 OPS. Milwaukee was one of the tougher teams to pick a player. They don't necessarily have the most young talent on their roster, but Freelich has been promising. Getting on to the Twins, I have Royce Lewis. Lewis is the former number one overall pick back in 2017, and after battling numerous injuries, he's finally on the field and playing very well this season. In 29 games, he's hitting 340 with 4 home runs, 2 stolen bases, and an 871 OPS, so if he stays healthy, he has a very bright future ahead of him, and I'm really rooting for him. Moving on to the Yankees, I have Anthony Volpe. Volpe is only hitting 216 this year, but he does have 16 home runs, 20 stolen bases, and 13 defensive runs saved, which is tied for 6th in baseball. If Volpe learns how to hit more consistently and strike out less, he's going to be one of the best young players in the game. Getting on to the Mets, I have Francisco Alvarez. Alvarez has been a great source of power behind the plate for New York, as in 92 games, he has 21 home runs. He also has 4 defensive runs saved, so he looks like he's going to be a very good power hitting defensive catcher going forward. Getting on to the Oakland A's, I have Zach Geloff. Geloff has been an absolute stud in his limited time this year, as in only 29 games he's hitting 292 with 8 home runs, 7 stolen bases, and a 974 OPS. If he continues to play anywhere near this level he's playing at right now, he's going to be a very, very good player, and he is clearly a very big bright spot on the Oakland A's who are really bad. Moving on to the Phillies, I have Johan Rojas. Philadelphia is another team that doesn't have a ton of young talent on their roster, but Rojas has been good as in 26 games he's hitting 288 with 6 stolen bases. If he can continue to hit this well and be a threat on the bases, he's going to find himself in the lineup more often than not. Moving on to the Pirates, I have O'Neill Cruz. Cruz has been limited to only 9 games this year, but last year in 87 games, he had 17 home runs and 10 stolen bases. For anyone who has seen O'Neill Cruz on a baseball field, you know just how talented this guy is. He's one of the better young players in the game today, and I think he's clearly the best young player on the Pirates. Moving on to the Padres, I have Fernando Tatis Jr. Tatis is having another great season as in 103 games, he's hitting 268 with 20 home runs, 22 stolen bases, and an 802 OPS. Now, I was going to put Juan Soto here, but I ultimately put Tatis Tatis because he has 19 defensive runs saved on the air, which is second in baseball. So not only is this guy amazing offensively, he is elite defensively in right field. Getting on to the Giants, I have Patrick Bailey. Bailey is a player that I'm sure not a lot of you have heard of, but he is a really good catcher who in 69 games has hit 264 with six home runs. Now you're probably thinking those numbers aren't necessarily impressive, but he is really impressive behind the plate as he has 16 defensive runs saved, which is tied for fourth in baseball. Getting on to the Mariners, I have Julio Rodriguez. This is another no-brainer as in 119 games, Rodriguez is hitting 274 with 21 home runs, 32 stolen bases, and a 4.4 war. Rodriguez is the hottest player in baseball at the moment as he currently has 13 hits in his past three games so this guy is already a superstar and he's clearly Seattle's best young player. Moving on to the Cardinals, I have Nolan Gorman. In a very disappointing season for St. Louis, Gorman has been one of the few bright spots as in 104 games he's hitting 241 with 24 home runs and an 815 OPS. This guy is going to be a really good hitter for St. Louis for a very long time. I like what I'm seeing from him this year and St. Louis, as I said, is having an awful year but Gorman is one of their few bright spots. Getting on to the Tampa Bay Rays, I have Isak Paredes. Paredes has quietly put together a great season as in 109 games, he's hitting 251 with 23 home runs and an 849 OPS. He has been one of Tampa Bay's best offensive bats and he has a very bright future ahead of him. Moving on to the Rangers, I have Ezekiel Duran. In 98 games, Duran is hitting 284 with 14 home runs, 7 stolen bases, and an 811 OPS. I was really close to putting Leody Tavares at this spot, but I think Duran has just had a slight bigger impact offensively for the Texas Rangers. Moving on to the Blue Jays, I have Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Even when having a down season, Guerrero is still considered the best young Toronto Blue Jay as in 119 games, he's hitting 264 with 18 home runs and a 775 OPS. Ever since his monster season back in 2021, he has gotten worse and worse, but there's no doubt in my mind Guerrero has all the talent in the world and he's going to pick it up sooner rather than later. And finally, getting on to the Nationals, I have CJ Abrams. Abrams is having a really good season as in 114 games he's hitting 252 with 12 home runs and 33 stolen bases. He's looking like the prospect he was expected to be when he was coming up through San Diego system and at only 22 years old he has a long time to develop and get even better which is a pretty scary thought. Alright so there you have my best player under age 25 from every team. Let me know what you guys think down below and as always thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.